some of your, for instance, your defense minister has said publicly that the reason was to divert Russian forces from other parts of the Eastern Front. But there are others on the Eastern Front, commanders, who say it hasn't diverted enough forces and there's still a lot of pressure on your forces on the Eastern Front, that important logistical hub of Pokrovsk. So has it been strategically a success and even tactically a success, what you've done in Kursk? Or, and do you think you might lose Pokrovsk? We do everything possible not to lose Pokrovsk. We increased our defense capability in the area. Indeed, over the last six days, the enemy hasn't advanced a single meter in the Pokrovsk direction. In other words, our strategy is working. Of course, the enemy has concentrated their most trained units in the Pokrovsk area. But we've taken away their ability to maneuver and to deploy their reinforcement forces from other directions. In other words, it turns out that even though they did not take any units from the Pokrovsk direction, well, except for one Marine Brigade, they are now unable to maneuver their reserves as they used to. And this weakening definitely has been felt in other areas. We note the amount of artillery shelling as well as the intensity of the offensive has decreased. In fact, the Pokrovsk direction remains the most problematic for us whereas the situation has stabilized in other areas. So I think this strategy was chosen correctly and it will bring us the desired result. There appears to be, and, and, and certain you know, commanders and, and frontline soldiers have told CNN that there's a, a bit of a morale problem in some parts of the front line uh, that a lot of young conscripts, young trainees are being sent out there. The battle is very difficult for them. Some of them just, you know, leave the trenches and go home. And I just wondered, you know, again, you said boosting morale is a very important part of your job. And I think there's something like 19,000 cases that have been brought before the military authorities of desertion and a failure to turn up for duty. Talk about that. How can somebody like you boost morale and make people still want to fight? Because that we, we feel, we hear that that moment of patriotic fervor that was so obvious at the beginning of the invasion seems to be cooling down. You're right on this point. The issue of morale is a very important area of our work. Of course, talking about the Kursk operation, we should note this is what has significantly improved the morale of not only the military, but the entire Ukrainian population. It was and still is an incentive that has boosted the morale of our servicemen, their thirst for victory. That's the first of all. Secondly, speaking of the training, of course, everyone wants the level of training to be the best. So we train highly qualified professional military personnel. At the same time, the dynamics at the front require us to put conscripted servicemen into service as soon as possible. That is why we conduct a compulsory mil basic military training for at least a month. And qualified training, which is at least two weeks a month. 
I want to know, what, I mean, you as commander, do you go to the front lines? Do you go to the trenches? Do you talk to soldiers there and commanders? What do they say to you? Because I know some of them have been there for you know more than two years. They barely get rotation. They don't get to see their family. There are these glide bombs, these terrifying things, that, and the drones, and there's just so much. I mean, it's almost it's almost World War One kind of, you know, a attacks on them in the trenches, and they're there for a long time with no real hope of rotation. What do they say to you when you go to see them and talk to them? First of all, we speak the same language. We understand each other, no matter who I am talking to, whether this is an ordinary soldier, a rifleman, for example, or a brigade commander, or a battalion commander. You know that I have been in this war since 2014, and over the last two and a half years, since the beginning of the full-scale aggression, I've personally been participating in combat operations as the commander of the operational and strategic group. Now I am the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine. In other words, the front line is my life. We understand each other. I know all the problems that our servicemen, soldiers, and officers experience.